Inside the Beltway again, joined by Senator Tom Cotton from the great state of Arkansas. Senator Cotton, I like to give back to my regular guests like you, so I want you to know. Do you happen to know who John August Arvedson is? <laughs> you stopped me on that one, Hugh. Well, he, he discovered lithium. And do you know the, oh. the uh, periodic table symbol for lithium? Because you'd better know in a hurry. I think it's L-I, isn't it? Cash it is L-I. I, we got a lot of it down From news right. items, first story this morning, researchers at the U.S. Geological Survey and the Arkansas government announced on Monday that they had found a trove of lithium, a critical raw material for electrical electric vehicle batteries in an underground brine reservoir in Arkansas. With the help of water testing and machine learning, the researchers determined There might be 5 million to 19 million tons of lithium, more than enough to meet all of the world's demand for the metal in a geological formation known as, and I love this, the Smackover Formation. (laughs) So, Senator Cotton, when did you learn about the Smackover Formation? Um, Well, Hugh, Smackover is a great little town in South Arkansas, um, and uh, we've been producing oil and gas in South Arkansas going back more than a century. Um, not on large numbers, certainly not, nothing like what you see in the Permian Basin today or the Bakken Formation up in North Dakota, but pretty steadily. Um, I, I would quibble a little bit with that New York Times story, which I read earlier today. It, it's not as if it was suddenly discovered out of the blue. You know, the smart geologists and drillers and other uh, uh, folks down there in the oil patch have, have always said, look, we, we've known that we've got these resources down there. We've always known that. It's just a matter of the technology to produce it. I think that's the story of hydraulic fracturing over the last 20 years in America and soon to be the production of lithium in South Arkansas and perhaps a few other places in America, um, of American ingenuity and inventiveness and entrepreneurial spirit. Um, And that's exactly what Kamala Harris and the Democrats would kill off if they win this election. Yeah, that's the thing the story doesn't tell you. You're going to need a lot of permits to go get the lithium. Yeah, tons, and, tons of permits. This is an active issue in South Arkansas about how they're going to produce it, which technology is going to be best, what the royalty rates are going to be. But the one thing everyone in South Arkansas agrees, this would be great for our economy. Whatever you think about electric vehicles, and most folks in Arkansas aren't the biggest fans of them, lithium is needed for every modern device, for your smartphone, for your tablet, for your computer, for your refrigerator, and everything else in your life. So this is a huge economic opportunity for South Arkansas. But the Democrats will, as they usually do, find yet another reason not to pursue this opportunity. It's just like you see in the energy world. They wanted to replace coal with natural gas, but then natural gas became viable, and that's fossil fuel, so we can't do that. So let's use windmills instead. Well, windmills, you know, take take up too much, uh, you know, space on the skyline off Martha's Vineyard and so on and so forth. With Donald Trump and Republicans, everyone from South Arkansas to Martha's Vineyard and in between will have a fair shake to get ahead and lead lead a high quality of life. With the Democrats in office, they will not. They will continue. I also want to point out the Chai Coms had this market. Didn't the Chinese have this market cornered uh, and into a way that it was a bottleneck? um, In the uh, processing and manufacturing, yes. It's important to note that lithium, like most so-called rare earth elements, are, are not really all that rare. It's not like, say, oil, which is concentrated in certain places in the world and you know, there's lots of countries that are not especially friendly to the United States that have a lot of oil. Um, rare earth elements are fairly common in terms of the mining, whether in the United States or in friendly nations. What's not common, and this is a pure failure of policy, is the manufacturing and processing of it. So in addition to finding the right technology to produce all the lithium in South Arkansas, we as a country need to make a major investment in manufacturing and processing lithium and other rare earth elements. It makes absolutely no sense to produce lithium in South Arkansas and then ship it to China so they can turn it into a finished product. We need to do that here in the United States. That's good for our national security. It also provides thousands and thousands of high paying jobs. Now, Senator, this brings me in a roundabout way to one of the main reasons people should vote for Trump. I've, I've already voted. I'm done. I'm Hopefully I won't get more pitches from people to give them money because I voted for Hung Kao yesterday, of course, for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. And I posted it, and I hope everyone goes out and does early voting. But I'm looking forward to the renewal of the regulatory reform efforts of the Trump era, 
where for every new regulation promulgated, two had to be stripped off. They actually exceeded that. We need to cut the federal government in half, in my view. Do you think the first reconciliation, if we win the Senate, we being the GOP, hold the House and elect Donald Trump, that the first reconciliation will empower him to strike at the regulatory state, both directly and indirectly? I, I think there's no question, Hugh, that it will. Just to give you one example, you know, in the Democrats' big budget bill, they hired um, tens of thousands of new IRS agents to harass small businesses and working families. That's just one example of how those bills can empower the regulatory state and how our bill could empower individuals and businesses and entrepreneurs. Uh, but you're right more broadly that when we had Donald Trump in office, we didn't just have lower taxes for families and businesses. We had a government that was focused on unleashing the American free enterprise system as opposed to creating a wet blanket of regulations to lay across it. And that's exactly what the Democrats have done for the last four years. Now, Senator, uh, yesterday I had your colleague, Senator Vance, on, uh, who I think is going to be our next vice president. We talked at the end of the conversation about the China threat and whether or not Xi was a Leninist or a fascist. And J.D. thinks he's a fascist. I think he's a Leninist. In the end, we both agree he's an enemy. J.D. talked about reforming um, acquisition at the Pentagon. Is that even possible? Oh, sure, Hugh, it's possible. Um, and there are pr some fairly clear ways to go about it. Um, take the problem we have with our munitions right now, um, the so-called empty bins or empty magazine problem, that any kind of major conflict with Taiwan, we've not run out of munitions um, in just a week or two. Um, these are these are technologically advanced weapons. Um, you know, it's not a bazooka for World War II, but they're also not a stealth bomber. It's not an aircraft carrier. With, with the right kind of leadership and initiative there to focus on it and drill down on the problem with some new legal authorities from Congress, like buying more multi-year contracts or getting more uh, foreign countries to buy our, our munitions, making it easier for them, therefore creating more demand, we can substantially increase production rates. Likewise, there's lots of great companies out there that have tried to, that have broken into the defense space, in part because they have iconoclastic billionaires who are willing to break China at the, at the uh, Pentagon. You think about Palmer Luckey and Anduril or uh, Elon Musk and SpaceX. It shouldn't take an iconoclastic billionaire if you have a good idea, especially if you have commercially available off-the-shelf technology to get into the Pentagon and sell your technology that's going to keep our soldiers safe and help them fight and win our country's wars and therefore deter them in the first place. It will take some strong directed leadership, though, in the same way that Bob Gates came in in the middle of war and was focused on things like getting mine-resistant vehicles to the field or cutting down medevac times. It really will take leadership there that makes that a very high priority. Now, Senator, I know you've been on the road for your colleagues who are running for the Senate, uh, either for re-election like Deb Fisher and, and Ted Cruz and Rick Scott, who are the three long shot targets that Democrats have put circles around. But also, I'm going to be in Ohio tonight with Bernie Marino and then up in Philadelphia on behalf of Dave McCormick on, on Thursday night. I am curious. How do you feel about the Senate right now? We'll come to the Trump race at the end. But what about the Senate? You know, Hugh, I feel very good. I was down with Rick Scott yesterday. Uh, I've been in both those states you mentioned. I'm uh, getting ready to go on a final blitz here, basically around all of our states. Um, you know, Hugh, you can look at the polls, but, you know, sometimes it's just better to look at people's actions. Um, when I was up in Pennsylvania, I, I saw Bob Casey running an ad talking about how he was working with Donald Trump on trade. He was right there. He was Donald Trump's wingman. And when I was in Wisconsin, I saw an ad of Tammy Baldwin. You know, she got Trump to sign her bill, her her bill, working with Donald Trump to protect American manufacturing jobs. You know, Hugh, I haven't yet seen a Republican ad talking about how we worked with Kamala Harris on this, that, or the other thing. So that tells you Nor will all you. you need to know about these races. Or for that matter, Hugh, I noticed that Chuck Schumer's uh, super PAC just dumped a bunch of money into the New Mexico Senate race. Well, they oh. wouldn't be doing that if they didn't think it was close. Oh, what now, give me a little hope for Hung Cow. Because if we elected senators the old way, the legislatures did it, uh, and we did it on merit and a little bit of diversity. There really is no more unusual Senate candidate who on merit would be in the United States Senate than Hung Kao. Prayer there? Hopeful there? What is that? Well, I think every Virginian Republican should certainly get out and vote early uh, for Donald Trump and Hung Kao like you did. Uh, Hung is a great American. He's an immigrant here. He went on to work in the Navy, he worked with special operations forces. Um, he'd be a very strong voice uh, for the 
uh, people of Virginia. And uh, like I said, I would encourage everyone to get out and vote early. For that matter, in every state, get out and vote early. I know, like you, you obviously, you're going to miss a vote. But when people like you get out and vote early, it allows these campaigns to cross uh, your name off their list, and then they can move down to those voters who maybe don't get out and vote in every single election. So Hung's a great candidate in Virginia. Um, and let's just let's remember, uh, Glenn Youngkin got elected in Virginia uh, just three years ago. So it is not a deep blue state. It's a state that can be won, especially if we have a Republican turnout. And Ed Gillespie almost beat Mark Warner. I mean, it was the, the on the missed opportunity. Let me close with this. You talk to the former president frequently. Uh, he's, he's a master closer he knows how to close, and he's closing in Pennsylvania, McDonald's, and the Steelers game. What do you think right now, Senator Cotton? Well, I think Trump's going to win. Um, <laughs> I think everything, all the omens are pointing in this direction. I mean, he's even got Hugh Hewitt to be speaking favorably of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, <laughs> but True. Uh, I, I just think more and more people remember that times were good with Donald Trump. I, I understand that some voters, mostly Democrats, you know, they don't like his— style, the way he talks, that's fine. But most Americans like low prices and high wages and a secure border and a peaceful world. And they look at what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have delivered, which is the exact opposite of that. And also, they have a lot of questions about Kamala Harris since the big switcheroo three months ago. And she hasn't done anything to allay those concerns. In fact, I think she's heightened those concerns. And you see it almost every single day. Uh, Uh, A quick last question, Senator, because you're on Senate Intel. We've had this leak of the Israeli Air Force plans. It's treasonous. Have you been briefed on it yet at Senate Intel? I haven't been briefed, Hugh. No, you know, we've been out of session. I haven't been in the secure information space. I don't want to confirm or deny the authenticity of those documents. But I can say this. Uh, We've had a year of leaks hostile to Israel. Um, And you shouldn't be surprised that you have those anti-Israel leaks from this administration because they've staffed their administration from top to bottom with a bunch of students for justice in Palestine radicals, from Kamala Harris's national security advisor down to the briefcase carriers and the coffee makers. Those are the kind of anti-Israel radicals in this administration. And in two months, they'll all be gone. That is why. I mean, if you're a friend of Israel, if you're an American Jew, or even a a, a person like me who's not Jewish but a strong supporter of Israel, go out and vote for Donald Trump because we've got to get this administration cleaned out of the pro-Iranian appeasement crowd. Senator Cotton, lithium king of the world. Good to talk to you, Senator. I'll be right back, America. Stay tuned. 